Hey everyone, I'm Nero. I'm back, and today I want to keep talking about Houdini. Today's topic is about rendering ocean surface inside Houdini, not by using Mantra, but by using Arnold or Redshift or other renders. Personally, I like to render ocean surface by using Mantra. But there are, and there will be some conditions we're gonna face. Maybe your uh, supervisor they decide to render everything by using Redshift or Arnold, right? So what can we do about that? We can't just、uh, give them a big chunk of mesh because that's kind of a city, right? So what can we do about that? How can we do that、uh, more efficiently, right? So. Here is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a grid here, which represents the surface. Of course, we need more resolution, say 100 to 100. And what we do is、uh, ocean evaluate. Of course, we need ocean spectrum. And、uh, this this is the readout. I I believe it, we may need more、uh, resolution. And a more、uh, resolution exponent, and this is the readout. Okay, how big it is? Nineteen point one seven megabytes. Okay, and what if you are facing a really huge ocean surface, like this one? Yeah, I just、uh, change this one randomly. And I, I guess we're gonna need more resolution. Now we increase the resolution, and、uh, how big it is? Three hundred megabytes. Just imagine, this is three hundred megabytes for one frame, and、uh, the resolution, two thousand by two thousand, is not that big actually. And you can keep cranking it up, and my computers start to.、Uh, Well, start to talk. Yeah, as you can see. Yeah, I I'm afraid Houdini is gonna die. Oh, fortunately, it's 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 not dying on me. Can you see the memory used? One point eight seven gigabytes. This is really huge for one frame. Okay. So what can we do about that? How can we reduce the memory use? Okay, let's、uh, put it back. So Houdini won't die on me. One hundred by one hundred. I just need to ten by ten. Okay, maybe not that.、Uh, maybe that's not enough. Hmm. Oh yeah, the gray side. Nice. Yeah, we went back to where we were. Yeah, okay. And there is actually a export to texture. Yeah, what does this mean? If you ever know something about displacement map, what a displacement map is, I'm gonna show you. Say we have a sphere here. And、I、put it to polygon and give it much more frequency. What two hundred? Two hundred maybe too crazy.、Um, leave it at twenty. And、uh, we're gonna put a point mob. We're gonna use a displacement a lot normal.、Uh, I wanna put the、uh, P here. And、uh, maybe we can put a、uh, turbulence. Use the turbulence to change the amount. Okay, this is a kind of a displacement map. I can show you if this one is on CD. Just imagine the black and the white are some kind of a map. And the white means push push away, push outward, and the black means pushing inward. And of course, we can change that later. But、uh, this is more or less what I mean. 
the displacement map. Actually, the where is that? The this map, this export to texture, the readout of, of this map. If I change this to a bunch of ESRs, this map is represented by not black and white, but uh, red, green, and uh, blue. Yeah, but they are kind of uh, kind of sort of the same thing. Okay. Then what we do is we are gonna uh, render out the frame range, maybe from RF start to RF end. So, which means this whole timeline, uh, we don't need that anymore and delete that. And uh, there is something else we gonna change, which is displacement in RGB, cusp in alpha. What is the cusp? The tips of the way, see? Like this one, if I do paint, paint mask, can we uh, paint that? This. This peak is called cusp. Okay, so we put the cusp in the alpha for later use. So, once we get what we want, I mean the shape. Say this shape is what I want, okay? And we can put the rows and columns back to two by two. So this is a very, very simple geometry. And then we just hit the button, save to disk. I already saved it out. So I will skip the uh, saving progress. After that, there is still a, a very, very important step you need to remember, which is to add a UV texture to the grid because before there's no uv nothing here okay but after you put a uv texture here we can get uv you can see here is uv i like to put the uv on the point okay i haven't tried if i leave it at uh, vertex but uh, i just put it here because this one what we're gonna get from this one is just a map and a, a map like a texture and every texture needs UV, okay? So if this one doesn't have UV, you won't get anything out of it. And then I just uh, use this one. Remember this is a, oh, there's a, yeah, oh, okay. And then you, uh, what you're gonna get just uh, a, two by two grid remember two by two grid with uv and we can copy this one and uh let's say we that doesn't test uh, render to object merge to merge that one in so this one is that one okay this is very very simple uh, put it to red this is my habit and uh we're gonna go to shop I just use what I made before and to show you first we're gonna need an image of course and the image gonna grab what what we exported remember the uh, export to texture this is the texture exported like I said represented by three colors red green and blue and then we Put the RGBA, which is uh, the red, green, blue again, to a vector map. And then the, the vector map decide how big it is, how big the uh, displacement will be. And then put the vector to the displacement. Okay, this is the first part. And the second part, we're going to get two standard shader. One is pure white, and the other one is blue, maybe green, whatever you like. And then mix them together by using a mix shader. And the mix shader, if I don't connect it here, just uh, try to blend them together. Default is 0.5, so half of this, half of that. But if you connect this one, 
This one, what is what is this one? I actually use the alpha. I use the alpha as the separator of these two. The alpha, which is this one, cusp in alpha. The alpha represents the cusp. Uh, haven't forgot, right? After that, we go out. We put the render here. And uh, of course, we need a Arno render. We put it here, and uh, that's it. And some light. Let's uh, try to render this one. As you can see, the, there is something, but uh, what is that? This doesn't look like a wave, right? That's because this is displacement, not bump. So we need to actually divide the model, say maybe four times. We're gonna start to see something, right? And uh, maybe we're gonna do more, eight. Wow, pretty much, huh? What about 10? Yeah, start laggy. This is what we got. And depends on the light and you can see the cusps or not. Uh, I will demonstrate if I just uh, put this one. Remember, this is the cusp. Put this one here. What are we going to get? See, this is the cusp. And uh, by using the run float, we can actually control the white and black, which is the mixed amount. See, we change it. Yeah, maybe I can hear, I hear render. So come on. Okay, we can do that. And then we're going to put it here. What are we going to get? So this is the whole progress. Just to summarize it, what we need to do is put a grid, give it UV texture, and uh, control the uh, ocean spectrum, save it out at the texture map, and uh, what we handle to the compositing department, maybe, or look dev, are two things. One is the UV texture the grid, maybe ABC, maybe uh, FBX, and then a bunch of uh, textures, and this is not that big. Uh, re remember before, maybe some gigabytes, uh, hundreds of uh, megabytes. So next time, when you ever face this situation, you know what to do. The whole theory behind this is because Mantra has its own way to interpret this spectrum. Remember this one. This one is just a displacement map. This is just a map. Okay, and Mantra has its own way to make the map evaluate, so the surface evaluates. Okay, but Arnold don't know about this. Also, Redshift doesn't know about this. And uh, that's why we need to specify the render frame range for the uh, spectrum. We can get a evaluated displace from the map every frame to make this surface evaluate. Okay, do I make myself clear? I hope so. I hope you found this video useful. I'm Nero, and see you next time.